Hello. Hello. I'm just uh, here. Um, it, making sure that Saren can get in. She sent a message that she can't find the Zoom link, so I need to try to locate it and send it to her. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I am trying to make sure that I send Saren the link. She's having trouble logging in. So I'm going to uh, try to navigate that. I know nothing about Zoom other than joining meetings. So I'm always <laughs> amazed at people who can manage it. <laughs> well, it's it it's it's easier, I think, with two screens. I'm working from home today, and so I'm trying to. You guys can see me, but I'm trying to toggle back and forth between screens so I can send her the resend her the link. So I'll be joining you in just a minute. And um, this meeting was. Uh, uh, pre-scheduled for recording, so recording is going on. I think you probably mm -hmm. got a notice, did you? Yep. Yeah, so just so you're aware of that. I'm going to be back in a minute. Nothing is ever easy. Is everyone else there? I am here. Okay. Is that Pat? No, that was Pamela, but I'm here. Okay. Oh, okay. No, I, I was waiting forever and nothing happened. And then I got the email that said that you were gonna resend the link because you weren't able to get in. But right. it, you know, it said I was waiting for the host, but the host never showed up. So I went back out and then I had a lot of trouble getting back in. Okay. Sorry. Oh no, that's that's. Um, I think that was 
mistakes on on my end. So. I don't think there's a mistake. I think I think it just. I don't know, maybe you weren't there when I was there or I wasn't there when you were there, but then mm. then my computer started acting weird. I don't think you did anything that you shouldn't have done. All right. It's just so timing, I everything. just sent uh, Saren the link again, and it's the public link. So I'll look for her to show up. Do we have here. anyone other than me? Is Marty here? Not yet. No. Elise is here. Yet. Elise is here. Okay. So you got here. Okay, great. I did yeah. easily. You got easily. Okay. Well, yeah. good. it was easy for somebody. <laughs> Originally, it was easy for me, but nobody and Mandy Jo Haneke is in the attendees. Uh, yeah. Right. I okay. saw that. Yeah. And, Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, so Pam. We, need, we need Saren and, and Marty. Yeah, Saren, and Marty, Tori. and Tori. Yeah. They must be having the same problem. Right. Because Marty for sure never has trouble getting in. Right. Sometimes Tori has, and Saren has frequently had trouble getting in. Right. I don't know. Not sure. Um, well, I just recent uh Saren the public link. So she'll show Maybe up you in can the send it to Marty the, and all right. I'll um, try to do Tori that too. as well. Okay. Because I think when you send the reminder link, it has a name on it, and I don't think it can be accessed by anybody else. I might be wrong about that. Right. It, that's it's, the one I use. Yeah, it's right. automated. Like, but, if you, so. but if I sent you the one that said Myra Ross, I don't know if you could use it. Right. Because we yeah. tried that once, and it didn't work. Okay. I right. think that that's a protection that they put in. Mm -hmm. I don't know. All right, let's see if I can get back into my email and email um, Tori and to Marty. You know the sad part? Pamela doesn't get a snow day. <laughs> <laughs> I guess they expect you to do zooms even when it's snowing that's why i'm here old, that's right in the good old days there would have been right in the good old days there would have been a cancellation because you couldn't right. get there now all you can do is pray for a power outage <laughs> <laughs> oh well a new thing for pamela, a kid to pray do you, for. do you see that saren is in the attendees now pamela you're muted, Pamela. All right. I was. I will double check right now. I was trying to send um, Saren and uh, Tori. Uh, so we do have two attendees. In, yeah. So Saren is there now. Yeah. And I will promote her to panelists. So that did go through, which is good. So she should be coming in. And okay, uh, she's here. So I am, it, it takes me on my tiny little screen. It takes me a moment to toggle back and yes, forth. Between, I am here. Between. Hi, Sarah. So, well, hi. The last the meeting link you which, sent, Pamela, that worked. Okay, yeah, Marty right. isn't here and Tori isn't here. So they're apparently having the same problem you did. Right. And I had so, trouble too. All right. So let's, only Elise was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I used the one that I sent this morning. Right. Mm -hmm. I did too, but then it yeah. said nobody was home. <laughs> oh. I don't know. Maybe on an iPad it works. I don't know. Well, I didn't get that link until you just sent me a few minutes ago. So I never got another link. Yeah, it's okay. automatically set up. So it should happen. Marty's, I'm looking for her email address because it's um, her name, but it's backwards. done right, backwards, right. I guess I'm not the missing link. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Very good, very good, very good. <laughs> that made my morning, Elise. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> 
Yeah, Marty's is very clever. It's her name backwards. Right. Y T R A M Smith. Yeah. Okay. But I think it's at Gmail, although I'm not sure. Might be Comcast. I don't know. Yeah. Oops. That oh, was yeah. a noise. Okay, I don't here know. they are. All right. So I've just sent them the same public link, which means that they should be able to jump in and I'll just promote them to panelists if they're if they're having issues and then I will go back to my full screen so I can see you all. All right. So And um, I'm not certain, are, are there any areas of Amherst that lost power? Not that I know of. Yeah, I was on. We technically have a quorum, although I would hate to see two people missing the presentation right. from Mandy, mm -hmm. because I think that's really important for everybody to hear. And we have to do it today. If we do nothing else today, we have to do that. Okay, so um, Tracy has her hand up, so I'm going to allow her to speak. Okay, well, we're, we're yeah not officially started, but yeah. Oh, hi. Um, we this is we Tracy don't have Bacon. people. People can't get in. Yeah. Okay, I can wait. I mean, oh, or okay. if you or if you are okay with elevating me to panelist or something, I I won't cause too much trouble. <laughs> oh. We normally uh, did do that. That's what they do for me at their meetings. But um, right. we do be. technically have a quorum. I just really would not like to start this meeting. And the problem is I have to leave this meeting by 10 of 1. So we're going to have mm -hmm. to cut the agenda way back. That, okay. But if we do only the streetlights and make um, talk about the meeting with the town manager and... Well, uh, Myra, is there any way we can uh, move up the membership? That shouldn't take too long. Oh, no, there's interviews next week. That's all there is to say. Yeah. Oh, oh. I'm not, at liberty, I'm not at liberty to tell you who we're interviewing. That's we, okay. We have interviews next week. Oh, Three that's people. So, and who's going to be participant? Pamela, oh. me, uh, woman named Alicia, who I don't know, who is the representative from the committee of, uh, they always have a representative from this committee that is there to make sure that all the things are done properly. And Paul Bockelman. Mm -hmm. okay. So um, I can double check to see if, to make sure that that link went through, but it was the public link, this link, the same one that I sent to Saren, so they should have, if they received it, they should could join that way. And I don't Yeah, see... Marty hasn't emailed us, has she? So no. Pam, uh, Pamela, where mm -hmm. was the link? I looked on the agenda and I did not see anything. And okay. there is a, 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 what is that? In the first sentence, it says virtually. So I can't even click on it. Okay. So I have it printed right here and I couldn't find where others found the link. Right. Oh, so the, it came today. Right. The, so the an hour ago. There's yeah, always one that comes an hour before. Oh, so uh, can That's you check? Can you please check what email it came to? Because I did not get it. Okay. Oh, I, I unless it went into my junk mail. Yep, that I that's where there. everything important always goes for me. Right. So I can double check, but it's it is um, automated when we set up the meeting. So you should actually be receiving three automated emails. One when with the calendar invite when the meeting is set up. One email the day before the meeting, and then a third email an hour before the meeting. Okay, so my link is my uh, contact information is incorrect. I did not get any one of those three. Okay. And I'm Perfect. just checking my junk mail 
and I don't see anything there either. All right. So well, I will I will make sure that we I, I connect with you and that we correct correct it. I don't see anyone else um, um, in the participants. I will um, maybe we should start the meeting yeah, and, officially. Yes. And the thing is, every other committee reads this statement, which I never do, and I don't even have it. Um, so are we do we need to have that read? So I uh, I think that it is the um, uh, suggested protocol the, the the statement about the meeting being held um, yeah and uh, on as a hybrid meeting or online with access through yeah. well this so, isn't a hybrid right yeah this one's all online I'm I'm of course whenever I'm asked to do something I'm always a little discombobulated but um, does anybody have that statement? I, I so I I think I can read it for you. Okay. So, so we should maybe start the recording. Right. It's been recording. We the, the recording is set up automatically so that we start. It's oh. you're recording now. You should have received a notice. Um that I did not you signed in to record. Elisa, you saw it, right? Or did you see a notice that we were recording? I didn't, but I heard when I got on, I heard recording now. Yeah, we are recording, right? Yeah. All right, so the um, I'll, I will read. The Disability Access Advisory Committee will meet virtually. Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so do so via Zoom or by telephone. See the instructions below. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. Okay, so we have only three members of our committee present. We have uh, Elise Link, we have Sarah and Darren, and we have me, Myra Ross. The other two people seem to be having trouble getting into this meeting, but um, I don't think we have any choice but to have it. So um, announcements we can sort of dispense with, except that I made a preliminary appointment with um, Jeffrey Dugan from Mass Office on Disability to come in April at noon. Um, we may have to change that because of the things we won't get to today. Um, I also need to say that I have to leave at 10 of 1. The um, public comment is next. Tracy, I assume you want to make a comment? Um, no, I mainly just oh. wanted to hear what the, oh, okay. I wanted to hear the updates from the committee, but thank you. Okay, okay. Um, all right, so I'm going to move things around in the agenda. Mandy Jo is here, I think. Mandy, are you here? Yes. Yes, okay. she is. I, okay. I can. Sorry about all this frustration with the Zoom link. Um, Mandy is here to tell us about and to get our input about the streetlights um, proposal that has been made by her and Anna Devlin Gautier to the council to um, to um, change the 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 type of street lights and to to talk about the location of the street lights and as i understand it you have divided this into discussion of type and discussion of location so you want to just tell us um where you are because most of the most of the concern i think that everybody that i've heard has has to do with location i don't know if that there's a whole lot of concern and dispute about changing the type. So do you want to tell us what you can about that with reference to where the concerns are? Sure. Thank you, Myra, and thank you, DAAC, for having me here today. Um, I am one of two co-sponsors for this lighting policy, which would be for street lights only at this point. Um, and as Myra said, we are um, the, the latest draft, which will be amended we're, we're waiting for more feedback, but before it goes back to the town services and outreach committee has removed sort of the 
the large changes to placement of streetlights. Um, the latest draft that is out there has the changes or it has a section that covers the current placement standards with a few minor changes. Um, but uh, where Anna and I are leaning towards on the placement issues is to go back to in whole the current street lighting policy that was adopted in 2001. We're not sure how we'll redo the policy. We're thinking about keeping that in place. Originally, our proposal was a repeal and replace. We're thinking about keeping the current policy in place and adding our proposed sort of technical aspects of what streetlights would look like to an appendix. But um, it's still in flux right now. But yeah, right now, at this point, there is no intention to change the current standards for placement in the current streetlight policy. Um, I know TAC was um, potentially concerned about some of those standards, but right now, because we've gotten a lot of concerns about what we proposed for placement, we don't intend to change what the current policy is on that. Um, so what, what would our policy do? Our policy would basically set forth um, the, what the standards for streetlights are. That means what um, what the Kelvin rating is. Are they more on the blue light side, which is what we have now, or our policy actually moves them a lot more to the yellow light side. It would, it would create standards for shielding, for uplighting, um, and basically for glare light trespass and glare. So, so we would create standards for streetlights that basically prohibits light trespass onto private property. We want to light the parts of the street. Wait, and the say that again, please. Place. I missed that. Oh, what about sure. That? Um, that, no, okay. Light trespass means lighting places that you don't intend to, getting light in other places. So for example, um, if you have a neighbor that has a spotlight, on their driveway that shines straight out to your yard and lights up your yard, that their light is trespassing on your yard. I, they're only supposed to be lighting yours. We're dealing with public ways right now. And so part of our proposal is to um, minimize as much as possible the light trespass from lights on the public way, street lights, um, to private properties, especially next to residential private properties. Um, and so for residential private properties, um, we've proposed lighting, uh, streetlights can't put light on private residential properties or on residential properties beyond what the full moon does. So we base a lot of our standards in terms of how much light is too much or not enough um, for that type of light trespassing and determining whether it's flowing into your bedrooms properly based on what a full moon illuminates. Um, glare is part of the shielding effort. We want all of our streetlights to be fully shielded. Um, glare can be a real problem, especially as people age. Um, think about when a headlight is coming at you if you're driving, the need to squint or look away um, and then the time it takes to get back to your vision and not have your eyes hurting because of that. And so we would like to be able to fully shield everything so and minimize glare so that the street lights are not providing those issues, which are safety hazards. Um, and then the up lighting is making sure that we don't light above a street light because the street lights are meant to light down, not up. Um, and so basically the whole part of the plan is to light what is supposed to be lit and not light what is not supposed to be lit. Um, I can go into it in a little more detail if people would like a little more detail about that. Um, but that's sort of the whole purpose of the proposal is to be smart about street lighting um, and make sure it does not harm people, it does not harm environments, it does not harm animals, and it, um, you know, and it, it, while avoiding those harms also provides the light necessary for the purposes of street lighting. Be interesting to know what the official purposes of street lighting are. So currently, um, so, you know, the purposes are in some sense what 
what the town wants the purpose to be. So the purposes we've stated in our proposed policies are um, provide street lighting that protects the nighttime safety, utility, security, and use and enjoyment of the right of way by the public, minimizing the adverse impacts of lighting on the public way and adjacent lands, um, protect humans, help protect humans, animals, natural environment from the adverse effects of night lighting from artificial sources, curtail light pollution, sky glow, um, and improve the nighttime environment and conserve energy and resources using uh, to the greatest extent possible. The current purpose um, in the current policy that, that we operate under right now is to provide a degree of safety for vehicles and pedestrians, um, but it says, but streetlights provide that degree of safety, but come with costs of money, energy, and light prom promotion. Uh, the degree of safety provided is not measurable and is highly subjective. The amount of light provided is both measurable and subjective, and the cumulative impact of streetlights on the skies is of growing concern. The money and energy costs are measurable. The difficult task with balancing all of those considerations is the responsibility of the select board. Um, so, so they have they they've sort of covered the yeah. same purposes, but in a different manner. Theirs is more financial. Uh, Huh. Um, what is the, do, what Sarah, is the role of, of our, our committee with this discussions of street lights? So the town services and outreach committee, which is where this policy was referred, asked us to get your opinion on it. So here we are asking, you know, I, what what would the role be? Um, you know, as we've stated in our purpose, and as you know, some some of the purposes of streetlights are safety, right? Um, and and we can discuss um, what what degree of safety we're looking for. I think that's been a lot of the transportation advisory committee's um, discussion is what what is that balancing and versus on the safety side right and for for daac i think that would be the same i think other things to be in you know that that might be helpful for us as sponsors would be things related specifically to your charge right um you know um as someone who is able bodied and at this point does not wear glasses or does not have night sight vision problems um it's harder for me to determine those issues right um but for someone who might have sight sight issues um and reaction to light issues uh getting feedback about those those considerations and what we should be thinking about as it relates to that um would be very helpful for those of us that have um nice. that, that don't experience that right now i see well do you have any questions let, yeah let me tell you what i experience okay. with safety uh that might not really be any issue to somebody that is mobile and not a mobility impaired like me who uses a wheelchair if there is a little ditch on the pavement a little hole or a little uh, inclination or something that will create me to roll out of my wheelchair so that is very important like when I go out with a you know somebody helping me pushing my wheelchair around. I always look as much as possible to see if it is a flat surface. So for me, safety might be a little different than what you might experience. And of course, for visually impaired, that's totally mm. something else and I don't know. Elise and uh, Myra will address to that more. Well, I at the moment, Elise is our perfect person to address this. Yes. <laughs> well, I'm thinking um, a lot of times I walk through town at night. I come home from rehearsals and things. And um, for me, safety in town, just as a woman being alone, I want well lit um a well-lit sidewalk and street crossings plus um just so people can see me and my guide dog and mm. i can't tell you how many people in black uh ride their sidewalks on the you know ride their bikes on the sidewalk and cars are you know people get distracted 
Um, I think visibility and safety that way, um, especially in the public areas like town. I don't know if I'm making any sense. <laughs> it does. Um, yeah. And, you know, yeah, that's basically. So you yeah. want sidewalk lighting to be very good. I want sidewalk right. and street crossing, right. you know, okay. to be well lit. Um, and parking lots, you know, like when people yeah. come at the, a lot of times, um, I used to have a lot of trouble with the high school and the middle school, um, not being lit at night because, you know, and coming out of rehearsal and almost getting hit by cars leaving because it's dark, right. you know, in front of the Jones library at night, things like that, you know, um, exits being lit. Um, I have some vision, I'm not totally blind. So, I mean, I do use a little bit of it and I count on my dog, but, but you know, I, I think of safety also. So there, there's my two cents, if it makes any sense. <laughs> yeah. For me, lighting doesn't help anymore so much. Um, so for me, the questions, I mean, for a blind person, it has to do with people seeing us not us seeing things. Um, but if you're a low vision person, for example, if you're work walking on High Street, um, which is dark, if you're using a cane, you can find all of the places where the sidewalk buckles, which is probably every two or three um, you know, pieces of, well, there's trees and that hasn't been repaired in the 42 years that I've lived in this neighborhood. So the whole sidewalk is buckled. A low vision person would not see that if there True. wasn't some decent lighting. Excellent. Um, yeah. A low vision person would not see um, streets that are um, where there are no sidewalks that are full of potholes. Um, She's right. Yeah. Which and I'm and for Saren, I yeah. think. It Say, would be impossible to, yeah. It would be impossible to go on some of the streets. Yeah. Um, that so that's partially a maintenance issue. Um, if the maintenance was better, it would be a little less critical to have good lighting, but the maintenance yeah. has not been good. So for us, every little crack in the sidewalk um, means you know could mean Saren gets dumped out. Yeah. Elise would not see it. You, Mandy, yep. might see it and you might not see it if it was dark enough. Um, you know, and you were walking in a residential neighborhood that has a lot of tree roots and a lot of broken sidewalks, or if there are no sidewalks, a lot of broken streets. So for me, yes. the issues are, can people see me, as, um, as uh, Elise pointed out, can people see me? And I understand there's a downside for people seeing you too which is, you know, they know where you are and they know you're alone and they can come and get you. If it was dark, it would be a little harder for them to know you were there. But if you're using a cane, it's not hard because it makes noise. So for me, oh, lighting yeah. is better than not lighting. Mm -hmm. um, but well put. Um, go ahead, Elise. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to jump in, but it's just, you, it's well, that's well said. That, that's said a lot better than I, because I also use my cane on occasion. You're right. Good point. <laughs> so um, for us, it's a matter of um, light that lights the right of way, really. Now, right. when you're talking about light that goes into bedrooms, um, which is what you brought up, um, obviously for me, it's not an issue, but for some people it's an issue. And I've always wondered this, and I don't know the answer, but they make room darkening shades <laughs> and blinds and curtains and are those things not, uh, do those things not get in the way of nighttime of, of streetlights? I mean, do those things not obscure streetlights? It does. It does. Totally. It does. They do in some yes. circumstances and not others. Yeah. Yeah. They can work, but they don't always work. Well, it, I got mine they, from J.C. Penny, and it's really darkening kind of things, and it's insulated as well. It works hundred percent. But I always also put night lights too, 
you know, for, uh, I like a little, just in case I need to reach out something. Right. Those little ones yeah. that you put it's in a the, personal, in the, it's kind yeah. of a personal yeah. choice, you know, so. So you're saying that even with, I don't know, Pat, Pamela, um, weigh in on this, even, because I don't know, but even with, uh, even with appropriate window treatments, it is not possible to obscure lights coming into bedrooms. I have, I'm sorry, Mark. I have a street light right outside my house um, on a dead end street. It's the only street light. Um, so it's very bright. Um, and we have uh, blackout curtains that we got at Target or JCPenney or something like that. And they work very well, actually. Yes. Um, so I, so. Uh, so so what I would say is it's possible, but then you also lose the other spectrum of that, which can be important for a number of us, which is the actual sunlight coming up to help wake you up. If you've got room darkening shades that your room is always dark, you actually have yes. a much harder time getting up in the morning too, because you don't have the, the sun and it's the true. daylight helping you and your body tell you it's time to get up. So, so there's pros and cons of both methods, hence the desire to make it easier to not have to use them for those that actually want to be so, able to uh, go Mandy, with the daylight issues too. Go ahead, Sarah. Uh, in uh, Mandy's solution, do you uh, see people sleeping with no drapes pulled and with no lights? Is that the other solution? Hmm? I mean, no. because uh, you don't like the darkening shade and the, the darkening curtains, but what is the other option not to have any drapes? You can have drapes that let a little bit of light in, right? I, I think our goal is to um, not make it, not force people to have to use something to avoid an artificial light that they have no control over which is what a street light is in front of their house, right? You don't have control over that light. And to force a person to buy, not just a, say you need dark to sleep, the room darkening shades to sleep, but then you also benefit from the light to wake up to buy the shades and then also the wake up light. And all because of something you can't control outside of your own property is, you know, isn't, some you know we're we're trying to sort of even the playing field across the town in terms of not uh, you know having people have similar experiences whether or not they're in front of a street light like Pat and I are and some of the people that actually came to me wanting to see a better policy that controls some of this and other people who happen to not have a street light next to them which is and actually I can tell you there are people, people who don't have them who wish that they did yeah uh, yes because Hence it's the policy is important <laughs> right so you know i i i mean it's not wow okay there's so much right. to say some of it doesn't have just... anything to do with this committee who said that i'm sorry i missed who spoke. it's it's pamela so i'm i'm oh, interrupting please. just for a minute to um you asked me to comment, which I don't think that uh, is really appropriate for me, but I do want to point out that Tracy has her uh, hand up, yeah, so no. she does okay. want to comment. Okay. Tracy, go ahead. Okay. Hi, Myra. With disability. Yeah. Hi. Well, and it has to do with the streetlights. So, I mean, Myra, when you spoke to TAC last week, I thought you raised a lot of good concerns, um, and we really appreciated your comments. And um, when um, Mary Jo is talking now just about how it sounds like the current proposal that they're thinking of moving forward is to go back to that 2001 streetlights policy and not change anything related to location. Um, I do have some concerns about that. So first of all, that 2001 policy, uh, Guilford Mooring, the DPW superintendent, he'd actually mentioned to the TAC that that policy is actually basically from 1991 um, when a number of a large number of streetlights, hundreds of streetlights were turned off all over town as a cost saving measure. And then in 2001, it was actually just tweaked a little bit. Um, but, and so, I mean, I'm just mentioning this, I hope, and please, um, anybody can feel free to cut me off if it feels inappropriate, but 
you know, just in terms of the access and accessibility, which is where, and safety, which is where TAC has really focused on. I mean, there are some, if um, the counselors are going to use that 2001 policy as a basis for their new policy, I mean, we do have some concerns about that, including there's that, I mean, there's some language about, well, it says here that streetlights in the current policy, the 2001 policy, it says streetlights will generally be provided as follows at intersections, at dead ends, and end of cul-de-sacs for road conditions deemed potentially hazardous, you know, such as steep curves or topological changes or areas with high accident history on all the downtown streets and on areas with heavy pedestrian traffic, such as in the vicinity of schools or other commercial areas, right? So it doesn't look at bus stops, for example, and there's also questions about what heavy pedestrian traffic means. You know, some of the UMass areas have heavy pedestrian traffic at some times a year and not others. And there's also language in here that also says that streetlights will not be provided by the town for pedestrians in residential neighborhoods unless one of the above criteria, the criteria I just mentioned, is met or the select board otherwise deems a situation to require a streetlight. And it says because such lighting could re be requested virtually everywhere in town. So one of the concerns that TAC raised is that we would like to see that latter language like taken out. Um, it just seems very anti-pedestrian. You know, we want to be age friendly. We want to encourage people to walk and bike at night and not get into their cars all the time. And so to have a policy that explicitly says that we will not support pedestrians in residential areas that don't meet those above criteria, I think that's just the wrong direction for the town. So. I mean, and TAC has made that comment before. So thank you. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Sarah, do you oh, have yeah. a comment? Well, no, I, I don't know. Good, I don't know. If it's a good suggestion. Oh, OK. Yeah. So I guess for us, what I'm hearing is more even about location still. I personally have no problem with yellow in, as opposed to blue. Do you, Elise? I, yeah, I don't think so. Um, as, you know, as long as it, it doesn't mute it, you know. Well, I mean, as long as it provides the same kind of light. No, I don't think I have a problem. I remember when all the street lights changed from blue, not in this town, but in when you went into the cities, when you went into, the, in, into New York, when it changed from blue oh, yeah. to yellow, I do remember that. And Me too. I it was much brighter at yellow, to tell you the truth. Yeah, um, actually it was because it happened in Brattleboro where I lived as well, and it was right outside my window. Yep, everything turned orange. Yeah, and it was I had no problem with it. I thought it was fine. So I have no I from a disability perspective, the visually impaired among us, I'm not anymore, but I have a visual impaired memory of this. And I have no problem with yellow. So that was one yeah. of the questions. Um, I probably mm -hmm. have no problem with anything pointing up to the sky. I mean, why should it? We don't need to light the sky. So it should light mm -hmm. down toward the sidewalk. Yes. My concerns really have to do with pedestrian safety and Same. pedestrian meaning in a wheelchair as well. Um, that, and that elderly. And elderly and, okay. too. You know? Yeah. So if you if you need to cross the street and you cross mm -hmm. slowly, you want to make sure that you're going to cross at a place that's lit so somebody can see you at night. I mean, yes. you have some personal responsibility as well to yes. not cross where it's dark and then say, Oh, it was too dark, they didn't see me, and I was too slow. So I mean, people have personal responsibility. But I think the town responsibility is to make sure that the right of way, the, the path of travel is lit. And mm -hmm. frankly, that the path of travel is not dangerous. And on that one, the town has failed um, because yes. the path of travel in a lot of places is quite dangerous for a lot of us. Um, Most so crosswalks I would, are dark. Yeah, um, but it's not only the dark, it's the poor repair that makes yeah. it very difficult to, to feel like you can walk safely without without injuring yourself. And I would say that holds True. for a lot of people who um, 
maybe elderly, maybe not as sure footed. So if you hit two different levels of sidewalk that are so different that several, Saren would not be able to negotiate yeah. them. And I'm talking about where there are roots. Um, yep. Saren would not be able to go down the street on high street. If somebody got her onto the sidewalk, she would not be able to traverse the sidewalk. Um, the because sidewalk it is so uneven. The yep. roots are, you know, so, and anybody could not see that. Um, if the sidewalk were better, yep. It could probably be a little bit darker, but I guess, yeah. Mandy, I, I have to say that if you're trying to make, I can't remember the word that you used to make everything the same for everybody. And I guess this committee is here to tell you that it isn't. No, it isn't the same for mm -hmm. everybody. Um, yeah. And you cannot legislate that it's going to be you have to legislate protections for people so that they can live safely and if you know now it's sounding to me like some people are very sensitive and just like i look for a house that's near a bus route i look for a house that has accessibility features Saren looks for certain accessibility features elise looks for accessibility features yeah. perhaps yeah. when people buy a house they have to buy one that's not that doesn't have a street light in front of it. Maybe yes, that's a criterion, but yes. I'm not sure that the town can say, oh, you have a street light and you don't, so that's inequitable. It's it's just, you cannot legislate equity. You Well, yes. equity you can, but you cannot, you cannot make the experience the same for everybody. No. You just, you just can't. Yeah, and- uh, I guess all, all of us are here to tell you that. Yeah, I live in my area. They were raising concerns about the streetlights. There were lots of people um, that were against it. Maybe Mandy, Joe, Henneke might be living in that neighborhood. I don't know. I live in Amherst. And I have a, uh, I live on a dead end street and there's a street light right where at the entrance, uh, you know, near my mailbox. And they were thinking of maybe eliminating those. And I see many people, elderly people that live on my street, walking around at night, especially around the cul-de-sac. So it's an important safety concern for them. And also I raised the issue that I, if I am to go out on my driveway, I don't want to go into a very dark area. You know, it's a safety concern. I cannot run away. I cannot defend myself. You know, luckily it's not a high crime yeah. area, but it is some concerns that elderly that are not even mobility impaired or visually impaired might feel. Yeah, I second that. Yeah. Yeah. So and anyway, I guess where the ahead, sidewalk please. ends. You know, I mean, yeah. sidewalks yeah. don't continue literally, literally, you know, linearly. They end in unexpected places. Yeah. They're not that. Oh, they absolutely do. <laughs> yeah. Where there isn't yeah. even a street crossing or anything, there's totally the high street sidewalk ends in the middle of nothing. And you have to cross the street to get to the other, to the continuation of the sidewalk. Amity Makes Street. No too. sense at all. Yeah. Um, anyway. Um, so do we need an emotion of any kind um, or is, uh, I'm not sure whether we need a motion, but uh, I wish there were more of us here. Um, what do you think, Pamela? Do you think we need a motion? So I, I think that's uh, for you to determine if you wanted to uh, propose a motion just um, summarizing the committee's position in response to the proposed streetlight, you would have an official record of the committee's position. Or um, if you yeah, didn't propose a motion, that. then I think, um, you know, you've shared the sentiment and that sentiment can be shared with the larger committee. So it's, it is definitely your, your call. So maybe, uh, Myra, we might want to say uh, the committee um, not only um, 
a, I mean, no, uh, we want to add new locations that has changed since 2001. You know, there are more areas that became more uh, inhabited as compared to old times. Maybe they should review that to see additional sites, no, not to decrease the ones that are already there, but because it provides safety um, for the people with visual impairments, and mobility impairments, as well as the elderly population. So we basically want to say that street lights are, that we believe that the, that one important goal of street lights is to make, you know, to light, uh, wayfinding path of travel um um and boy i don't even know how to do this you can't put a street light everywhere some places are going to be dark some places are going to be lighter yeah. um you know it's not even it's not equal it can't be even or equal um it has to be street lights are uh, okay, so we can say that we support the down, what do they call that? The pointing down? What do they call that, Mandy? There's a word of that. Um, so so we call it no uplighting. Okay. <laughs> no. Is that okay. One. okay. All right. So, I mean, there's no reason to have uplighting. So yeah. that would be a good thing to, we support the no uplighting. We support the and yellow, yellow lights, rather said, than right? rather than the blue yellow and light. It would be a good idea to do that. And we believe that the purpose of lighting is to uh, support safe travel yeah. for pedestrians. Um, yes. People who drive cars have a different view of the world than people who don't. Yes, um, and Sarah, and you're a person who drives a car sometimes and who doesn't drive a car sometimes. When yeah. you're in your car, you're probably looking for other things than when you're out on the, you know, right? I mean, you don't drive that much anymore, I assume. Yeah, I don't. But with um, my vision, uh, uh, the reason I don't drive as much is because I have visual impairment now. And, oh, okay. uh, but like when, um, we were traveling my daughter was driving on middle middle street yeah and uh it's very dark there and there are lots of pedestrians walking their dogs there and boy she saw one and i i could have never seen it seen the person or the dog until we were so close so really for a driver with some visual impairments which are still driving you know it's important too to have uh lighting on the quite used roads because it was a danger if i was the driver i could have hit that person yep. easily because they don't expect you to be approaching they think that we will see them but on a dark street it's very difficult to notice so it's for the safety and uh of the person using that roadway as well as a driver too so they don't find themselves getting in an accident yeah all right so um we i guess i guess a review uh, of the do you have the is your proposal to keep the 2001 language officially made so Right now, our, we, I can't tell you exactly what the next draft will look like, but we have run into very large concerns about placement and much less concern with the technical aspects, the full shielding, the, the limiting the light trespass, which, which I, I do want to say that if we can accomplish the limiting of the light trespass and the full shielding and all, and 
that actually potentially allows for installation of more lights that do not actually disturb residential areas for things like sleeping and all, because they will be lighting the only spots they're supposed to light. Um, but, you know, we've run into less concern about the technical spots, more concern with the placement spots. So, you know, okay. our solution to that was to try and press forward with the technical aspects, see if we can get agreement on that from everyone, including our town staff, which is which is we're working on in terms of that negotiation because there's there's a lot of issues with that um, for potential adoption of that part while not addressing essentially any of the concerns with the placement issue because that is a much larger as we're finding out a much larger question with a yep. lot more um, things Passion. to. <laughs> to hash not just hash out to consider to do to to come up with ways to actually write a policy right as Tracy said what is a high pedestrian area right um and what is light trespass so light some trespass people's is trespass is other people's lack of trespass I can't imagine that in, in a residential neighborhood where the houses are pretty close together that you're going to have no light trespass from any street lights. So that's where the shield <laughs> comes in, actually. If you properly shield, you can actually yes. stop the light trespass from coming onto your so I'm, lawn. I'm, I'm still going to light the sidewalk? Lessen yeah. it. Yeah. Say that, Elise, what? please. Elise has it, her hand up. Yeah, yeah um, I was trying to get her to talk. I'm sorry. Um, I yeah, it would lessen because it wouldn't be right at eye level. It would point down and shield the eye. You know, it'd be like I don't think you know it would lessen the trespass. I would think, but also, um, Tracy brought up a really important point, and one of the areas that I know you don't want to like put more street lights and all. That's not part of it, but I think that bus stops also really need to be lit. Um, for safety purposes. Yep. So that's just my, that's it. <laughs> okay. So the path of travel, including uh, yeah. corners, all the things that are in that, plus to add bus stops. I okay, would so like to do that because but, there are people that, yeah. And I mean, I, I guess I'd like to uh, say there are some Thank you. new developments that happened since 2001. So if there are, I don't know, like if there's a development with different streets and with dead ends, so do they still keep that policy and put a light at the end of the dead end street? So if they haven't, that's what they should still uh, use the policy for new developments as well. That's what I was trying to say. Well, I assume they put them there at the end of the street so people don't think the street continues and drive into a dark house. So <laughs> even if it is a new development after 2001, so that covers all of those. So I haven't I seen I think it should policy. cover everything that, that is in the town until the until the thing changes. I see, I see. Um, okay. But so it's really hard to, to do this. We would like to add bus stops. We would yes. like uh, to support the down or the not up. We would like to support the yellow. Um, we would, trespass is fine as long as it doesn't, lack of trespass is fine as long as it doesn't interfere with travel with pedestrian travel and I, I guess there's one thing that was said last week at the TAC meeting which I do take issue with um, which was that for example you're trying to make things equal there are people who have cars and drive them all the time there are people who cannot afford cars and don't drive them they walk a lot they bike a lot and they take buses and so for people who take buses they need lighted bus stops. They need them to be lit at, at uh, reasonable hours that people would take a bus. So if it's after 11 p.m., people do in a college town take a bus after 11 p.m. Mm -hmm. As long as the buses run, 
they, there has to be lighting because equity has to do with people's safety. Whereas you're in a car, you're a lot safer than a person who's walking on the That's street right. or waiting in a bus stop. So if you're talking about equal, and if you're talking about leveling the playing field, you have to level it in a way that makes everybody equally safe. So I guess, what are we going to say? We're going to say that we want um, that for us, pedestrian and um, commuter, bus commuter safety is okay. of paramount importance. I the stream. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Um, anyway, uh, can you make any sense out of that, Pamela or Pat? <laughs> Because I really didn't make any sense out of it. No, I think you did a, a great job of summarizing that you, um, as a committee, supported the not having the upward lighting. The, the double negative is sort of odd. Um, the yellow lighting and concerns for safety for pedestrians, as well as having lighting for uh, bus stops. So those are the four points that I caught. And I, I think you did a very good job of stressing that, that about, there needs to be a balance between uh, safety concerns for pedestrians, um, whether they have light, you know, sight vision issues or not, um, safety uh, concerns for individuals who are uh, using um, a wheelchair or other mobility devices. Uh, uh, um, and those concerns have to be balanced against the desire to have um, less light pollution and less um, uh, less light trespass. So I, I think you did an excellent job of- Are we saying are we saying balanced or are we saying supersede? So that's a decision for you to make. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> that's what I'm asking Sarah and Elise. So would it clarify that a little bit? Um, well, Pamela described it Yes, very um, judiciously yeah. as balanced. And yes, there is a balance, but is it an equal balance? For me, the balance has to be on the side of safety um, yes. rather than the side of inconvenience um, because there are things yes. just like everyone on this committee compensates for what we can't do all the time by doing it a different way. Um, there are compensations for light coming in the window, and there are compensations for not being able to wake up with the sun, which one of which is called winter, because most people that work have yes. to get up before the sun in the winter. So, um, I, you know, I, for me, I feel like it has to be balanced, tilted towards safety. Agreed. Right. And also for the people that will be harmed. Uh, not only people with mobility impairments and visual impairments, but seniors as well. Okay. So Pamela, well, can you throw in? We're living in, I mean, there are, we're in a spot where everybody's talking about aging in place and making right. it elderly right. friendly. This is right. one of the things that has yes. to okay. be considered. So yes. as part of the age and dementia family uh, friendly companion, community yep. and for people with disabilities we support the no up we support the light we we are interested in pedestrian and um wheelchair safety particular and we're interested in bus stops but the balance i would say where you had the word balance i would say i think we want balance skewed towards safety yes elise yes. yeah so i totally agree you, yes. You oh, you agree. Well. Okay. All right. So, um, Pamela, can you read something that looks like a promotion? <laughs> so, I uh, I think that I think that you that you've captured it. Okay. So, yeah. All right. So, right. Um, yes. Elise, do you how do you vote? I vote oh, yes. We need, well, somebody has to move this. Yeah. When are you going to move this? nebulous language i don't know how to, I wouldn't you know to, how to begin. I wouldn't i'm know sorry how to begin. you broke up what did you say i wouldn't know how to begin i mean i <laughs> just say just say i move pamela's language i okay i move 
yeah, I move. I don't know how to put it. <laughs> I'm going to suggest that Mandy, actually, she's wonderful at putting things into motions. Yeah, better than <laughs> I, saying, I would. Uh, uh, so this would not be my heart. strength. <laughs> Nor mine. Nor mine. Uh, Pamela was... did a great job. Maybe Mandy yes. could just push it over the edge for the rest of you. Yeah, she does. It's true. I will second it, though. OK. So is Pamela put it, it right? The motion okay. that yes. Pamela was yeah. kind of summarizing yeah. for us. Yes. So how do you vote, Saren? I would vote for yes. OK, how do you vote, Elise? Yes. And I would vote yes. And I'm so sorry the other two people aren't here, because I'm sure they would say the same thing. Anyway, Mandy, I really appreciate um, your presence and I appreciate you bringing this up because we always have to bring up things that maybe need to be rethought and then you get to see that there's a lot of people that feel different ways and that's part of governance I suppose and at least you guys are going to accomplish something unlike the national government but that's not <laughs> something I should say. <laughs> I, I want to say thank you for all of your thoughts um, and, and the motion itself, but but the support for some of the technical aspects and, and your thoughts on just navigating, particularly as pedestrians and, and bus users and car users, right? Car users that um, are, you know, everyone. <laughs> and and right. as we've seen through visiting all of these, the placement issue is near and dear to everyone's heart, which makes it extremely hard to to talk about and to figure out what is right. right. Um, and, and so we're we're doing the best we can as sponsors to figure out how we can move forward with certain aspects and then what to do with the other aspects because it's clear from all of our discussions with all of the committees and just what we've heard from people coming in that placement um, probably needs to be looked at in a more formal way than just two counselors proposing a change, right? And, mm -hmm. and I'm not sure how how we get there on that, but um, it's clear that there's there's a lot of different views and concerns about what we do and don't like in this town. Yep. Yeah. Oh, on so many levels. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yep. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank you very much for giving us Thank the you. time and for, Thank for talking to us. I appreciate it. Okay. Given that I have to leave in like 10 minutes, I want to tell you that there will be interviews for the two vacant positions on this committee. Um, next Wednesday, we're interviewing three people, and then the town manager will make a decision about who gets um, appointed. It's his decision. Um, and then he will bring his proposal to the, uh, to the town council, and at some point, they will approve people and then we will have more members. So that's really good. That's the other piece, good. the other piece that I know we can, um, do you know anything about the $50,000, Pamela, about proposals that different off uh, different town departments have made for that? I, I have not found out any additional information on that. Um, and Chris and um, Guilford who were here with us, um, I know Chris had told me earlier that she had to leave um, because of a personal obligation, so she dropped okay. off. And I'm unsure um, what, um, about Guilford's schedule, but I know that the town office is uh, closed today at noon, so okay. they may have dropped off um, yeah. as a result okay. of well, that. Or, I mean, we just had ridiculous in impediments to getting this meeting going, so. Yeah, um, so. Okay, yeah. all right, so we'll bring that up again. Um, there was a meeting with the town manager on the 17th of February. Pamela attended, Pat attended, Marty attended, the town manager and me, right? That was it, I think. Um, and we talked about the pedestrian, uh, accessible pedestrian signals repair situation um, and um, the way we had a nice talk that went on for a long time, actually. Um, and I think the town manager heard us um, about, you know, we had this, there was $30,000 that I was told was available for this project. He was going to check and to see where that came from because he seemed not to be sure. He thought perhaps it was left over from something 
I don't know how that ended up, Pat, do you? Not yet, but I can uh, email him today. Okay. Um, I also made a phone call to the gentleman from Ocean State Signal that sells the uh, and in, and uh, sells the accessible pedestrian add-ons to traffic signals, and to ask if he had been contacted by anyone from the town yet. And I have not yet heard back from him, so it's possible that he has, and it's possible that he hasn't heard from them. So. If Pat, if you could find out from Paul where we are on all of this, because you have access to Paul that we don't have, um, that would be great. If you could okay. find out, um, you know, where they are, have they contacted the company? But we did have a nice talk. And I think, I don't know, I mean, Pamela and Pat, you don't feel like you can speak at these meetings, but I wish you would because you were present. Mm -hmm. And maybe I'm forgetting something important that needs to be said if you ask us um to like answer a question or things like that that's what we can do um and, and there's a fight coming up in council about whether what a liaison's role is and um <laughs> but i'm i always like to jump in and i i think that it's not always the right thing to do um, well, I guess I'm inviting you to because you were present. And oh, you, yes. I, I, I might not have remembered something important that I should say other than that he heard us and that, you know, we talked about how things had lack, had not evolved on that topic. And he seemed like he was very interested, but he wanted us. Oh, yeah. He wanted us to prioritize where we would want the signals if he didn't That's have right. enough money and mm -hmm. marty uh and i both agreed that it all depends on how much they cost like if one signal will eat up the whole budget that might not be the best use of the money whereas if you could get the whole budget you know to cover uh, several signals and then do more next year we might prefer that so we were waiting to hear about what each one would cost before we were able to prioritize. And I don't know how you feel about that, Sarah and Elise. I think it makes sense. You know, if we, makes if you have limited funds that you cannot do everything, prioritize to the most used ones, go with them first, maybe. Makes sense. Okay. Well. We didn't know how much each one would cost, so we really weren't prepared to answer that question, but you would like it to be for something that is um, utilized most. You know, yeah, I think yeah. I, there are a, yeah. quite a few places that are utilized a lot. Um, yeah. Or maybe, you know, you know, if you don't thing. know, we could make a survey to see which is, you know, there could be some people with visual impairments living in a complex close to for example, the one by the, oh, I can't even remember the name of the street, but you know, in a special area, then we can identify and then it doesn't seem like in the middle of the city of the town, but widely used otherwise, you know, mm. and identify. You know, like the I one I'm talking about, at the intersection of Main Street and the Triangle Street, uh, you know? Uh, that's the one that I would use, but I think a lot of other people might not. So yeah. I think the center of town ones might be the best way to start, like on Kellogg yeah. and North Pleasant, and but it all depends how much they cost. And, and he didn't, um, he seemed, he wanted us to say, do this. And neither one of no. us felt like we could do that, so. I think we um, have to wait to find out the details. Yeah. And I would and, go for the most popular places, the most well-traveled. Okay. okay. All right. Um, now, the other thing um, we were going to talk about the, oh, Jones Library is coming in April. Um, oh. Remember how so several of you wanted to get on the building committee? None of you were chosen. Yeah. Um, and, but they're coming in April. So that's our meeting in April is with the B MOD guy and Jones Library, and we were going to talk about. Do you have anything to say about North Amherst Library, really quickly? Because I have three minutes. 
Oh, no. we were uh, we were going to do something about the um, what was it? We the listening had, devices. The li assistive yes, listening yes, yes. devices. What yeah, happened? So, to I, that? so I've I have um, I did ask that question, and I was told, but have not confirmed that the North Library would have um, assistive li listening devices. So. Um, Guilford was going to address that because he's the project manager for that um, project. Okay. So I, um, I, the initial information I got is that they will be there, but I think we want to have confirmation from Guilford, and I can uh, reach out to him yeah. by email yeah. and at least try to answer that question and share the answer with the committee. That would be great. Yeah. And hopefully he'll answer you, um, but that would be great. Okay. Um, and I guess the other thing is the North Common, which um, is, I don't think there's much to talk about with that, right? I think they were going, uh, a couple oh, of people they were met. going to be They did, the okay. Right. Oh, I forgot when they did that. Okay, you yeah. don't know about that. Um, they went on a walk about, um, and uh, I think, they were fine with the suggestions that this committee made, whereas uh, the entrance to town hall is going to be complicated um, because the topography is very difficult and they were still going to try to, Marty was even still going to try to figure out what should be done. They had talked perhaps about making the back door accessible. There is a ramp that goes down that's too steep, but they were thinking maybe that that would be a way to park and be able to walk in, you know, to roll into town hall and get to the elevator, which you cannot do for Main Street because of the topography. Even if they did fix the sidewalk um, and make it level, uh, you know, make it un, you know, not broken. Um, I don't. I think that they were that that the uh, the slopes were so great that yeah. I don't think Marty could figure out how to do it. Um, and I think they were still going to talk about that, but they didn't have an easy answer. Uh, there is a, a couple of, uh, on the, what side it is? On the side next to the Amherst College side, on the back, uh, there is an entry to the second level, and there are a couple of steps. To enter, could something be like a stair lift or something be installed toward there? the church? You mean? No, no, not for the town hall. Right. I, yeah, I think toward that that on is... the church side. Yes, on the church side. Okay, okay, okay. The south side. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. South I think side. that that south side entrance um, would pose uh, problems because there's a driveway there, and so you don't, I believe, have enough clearance between. The driveway in the uh, and that side entrance to create a ramp with uh, the right grade. So it's the same, a similar right. problem that you have on. Right. on I wasn't the, thinking on of a ramp necessarily. Maybe a stair lift. Okay. Okay. So that I don't know, but um, yeah, that I mean that is a, and then it could open the entrance to that could open it the same way the stairs are pointing right now. Mm -hmm. I think I'm we're going to need to have Marty in this conversation right. um, because I think she has done a lot of checking and thinking and yeah. they, were, they were really trying to figure it out. Um, they know they're not in compliance, which is the good news. The town is definitely on notice that they're not in compliance. Um, and I, I don't know how much they're going to be able to do um, beyond that, but I know Marty is um, trying to figure it out. Okay. Anyway, I need to leave. So if we are yes. going, if you want to continue the meeting, that's, well, you can't really, because I'm the quorum. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so I guess um, I think we can all it's quit. very <laughs> awkward. I mean, I did everything out of order. I did it because Mandy was there. I should have done it because Guilford was there. I didn't know which one of them I should. Anyway, yeah, I probably didn't do it right. Anyway, well, okay. Um, All right. So, is there anything else we need to know or do? I think this is very nice. Yeah. So yeah. I will, um, <laughs> Saren, I will uh, email you after the close of this meeting to make sure that 
the email address I have is the same yes. one that, that I got the using. one that you just sent. So right. that I got, but nothing else before that. So there's right. something someplace. And okay, um, go. I'll make Goodbye, sure folks. that Bye -bye. the new agenda has um, um, Jeff Dugan on it for the April meeting, as well as the Jones Library folks. So I will um, okay, I'll work good. on that. Yep. All right. Can I ask right. one question about Jeff Dugan? What is the organization he's with? I so he's he is with the Massachusetts Office on Disability. Gotcha. Right. Thank so, you. Right. Thank you very much, and thank you, everyone. Thank right. you. Okay. So I'm I'm going to note that we're adjourning at twelve fifty three. Okay. Very good. Right. <laughs> bye bye. Bye. Thank you.